Teach Us to Pray is brought to you by Life Audio and is a part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. Hello, friend. You are listening to the Teach Us to Pray podcast with me, Christina Patterson, where we teach believers practical and real-life tips on how to grow your faith and relationship with God through the power of prayer. Last episode, we discussed how to pray based on Jesus's example found in the Lord's Prayer. Through Jesus's example, we learn that prayer consists of reverencing God, repenting of what's not of God, and requesting what we need and desire from God. We called it our three R's prayer process to learn how to pray. As important as it is to know how to pray, it's also important to know how not to pray. Now, as believers and friends of God, we have a lot of liberty when it comes to prayer. We are not restricted when it comes to where we pray or the structure of our prayers or even what we pray for. The Lord's prayer that Jesus used as an example to teach his disciples and us how to pray is just that, an example to teach us how to pray. At the same time, Jesus also provided instruction on things we should not do when we pray. We find his instruction in Matthew chapter 6 verses 6 through 7, which reads, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, Go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. As we look at this scripture, I want to point out the acts Jesus did not want his followers to do when praying. First, don't be like the hypocrites, don't pray to be seen, and don't pray using vain repetitions or empty words. During Jesus' ministry, he went out to teach, heal, and set many people free. He was generous, kind, and loving. Still, he always proclaimed the truth. And one of the groups of people that Jesus frequently spoke truth against were the hypocritical religious leaders of his time. Now, these were men who knew God's word, challenged and judged everyone else to live up to God's standard found in his word. However, they were hypocritical because they did not live God's word. Jesus's most important commandment was to love God and love others. In Matthew chapter 22 verses 36 through 40, we read, teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands hang all the law and the prophets. So although the religious leaders Jesus would face during his ministry knew the law and maybe even followed it, their greatest sin was the condition of their hearts. So Jesus combats their hypocrisy and reveals the fact that you can follow the rules and still not love God. You can follow the rules and still not love people. And if there is anything we need to know about God, it's that he cares deeply about the condition of our heart. So when Jesus is teaching about prayer, he may makes note to say, do not be like the hypocrites because we can pray and still not have a heart for God. We can pray and still not sincerely love God. We can pray and still not know God. Jesus wants us to pray, but when we do so, he wants our hearts to be true, right, and sincere. Well, how do we know if our hearts are pure when we pray? Well, Jesus tells us, don't pray to be seen and don't use vain repetitions or empty words. These actions reveal a heart that is not sincere. So let's discuss not praying to be seen first. Jesus tells us when we pray, go to our rooms, shut the door when we pray. He tells us to meet the Father in the secret place. Now we might not always be able to physically go to our rooms and shut our doors when we pray. Jesus means that we should not pray to be seen by others, but pray to be seen by God. As we seek God in prayer, our heart should be for connection with him, not attention from others. When it comes to prayer, it's all about God. Prayer should be personal, not public. 
The hypocritical religious leaders that Jesus was talking about prayed only to be seen by others. Their heart was not to connect with God, which is the very point and purpose of prayer. Now, this does not mean that we are not to ever pray publicly. You may be called to lead prayer at your church or pray with a Bible study or small group. We should pray publicly with others. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, Jesus says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So yes, it's fine to pray publicly and necessary much of the time, but Jesus' instructions on prayer still applies. Your heart should be to connect with God, not be seen by others. Still, there are times where we need to go to our secret place and pray to God. I hope that you've had the chance to see the movie War Room starring Priscilla Shire. In the movie War Room, the character that Priscilla Shire plays, Elizabeth Jordan, is desperately fighting for her marriage by using the power of prayer. So in her closet, she creates a secret place to pray to God that she calls her war room. And throughout the movie, we see her personal prayer in her war room or secret place being answered and manifested publicly in her actual life. One time she is praying fervently for her husband, who at the time is on a date with another woman. So as she is fervently praying and he is about to throw his whole marriage away, we see a shift in her circumstance. Her husband, who again is on a date with another woman, starts to get sick and has to leave the date. Now, the interesting aspect about her prayer in the movie is that she knows where her husband is and what he's doing. So she could have took matters into her own hands, went to the restaurant to her husband that was on a date and caused a huge scene. But instead, in her secret place, she surrenders the situation to God and God answers publicly. Throughout the movie, we see the power of prayer and surrendering to God in our quiet places, making space for him to do what we cannot We see Jesus' words, your father who sees in secret will reward you openly, lived out. As we pray, we must know we don't need to be seen by others for God to answer our prayers. We only need to approach God with a sincere heart. So when we pray, we are instructed by Jesus not to pray like the hypocrites, not to pray to be seen, and finally, not to pray with vain repetitions or empty words. Again, this is a heart issue. When we come to God sincerely, we don't have to have all the right words or the correct speech. Jesus tells us the heathen uses many words when they pray, thinking this will ensure that God hears them. But that is not how Jesus instructs believers to pray, because that's not how prayer works. There is no word count when it comes to prayer. It just needs to be real. Sometimes my prayers are one word, Jesus. Sometimes that's all the strength we have to say, depending on what we're facing. And God hears those prayers, too. I think of Elijah in first Kings chapter 18, who prayed a few sentences at Mount Carmel and God heard and answered with a consuming fire. It doesn't take much. And sometimes you don't have much. You may be a busy mom or work is demanding. And so maybe you're in a season where your prayers are shorter than you would like. Let me encourage you by letting you know that brief prayer is better than no prayer. As Jesus instructs us how to pray and how not to pray, I hope you realize how much freedom we have when it comes to prayer. We don't have to worry about our words or the length of our prayer being perfect or what others think. We have a loving God who is simply excited to hear from us when we approach him with a sincere heart. Prayer is not about being perfect. It's about connecting with the God who perfectly loves us. It's my hope that today's episode has provided you with insight and helpful tips on how you can pray. We have so much more to talk about when it comes to prayer. So I hope that if you were encouraged by today's episode, you'll share it with a friend and subscribe so that you don't miss any future episodes of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, where we will continue to learn how just like breathing, prayer can become a natural, consistent and life giving part of our everyday lives. Until then, be sure to connect with me, Christina Patterson, at 
at BelovedWomen.org and check out the show notes in today's episode to download my free five-day prayer guide to help you put into practice the powerful habit of prayer. Thank you so much for taking time to listen today. God bless you, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Teach Us to Pray is a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. If you enjoyed this episode, would you take a minute and leave us a review in your podcast app? It really does help more people like you find the podcast. To hear more from Christina Patterson, be sure to check out her fantastic site, BelovedWomen.org. A special thanks to Kelly Gibbons, Stephen Sanders, and Stephen McGarvey for their production and editing on this episode. You can find more podcasts like this over at LifeAudio.com.